Thank you. Have, uh, have you ever felt that deep longing to live a life of significance? I don't know about you, but I want my life to matter, to be more than a list of accolades, a Wikipedia page, or a wall of awards. I want to have eulogy virtues, the kind of values that matter when our time on earth is done. I'll bet you do too. I grew up in a small Kansas farming community. My family and community taught me all about faith and hard work. My great uncle, Lyle Yost, invented mechanized farming equipment like augers and hay balers. It was his mission in life, and he turned it into a Fortune 500 company. But Uncle Lyle also had a calling in life, and that was to give away all his money to those who are less fortunate before he died. And at age 97, two years early, he actually did. Uncle Lyle had great business success, but he also had those eulogy virtues. He was the first of many mentors in my life. We all stand on the shoulders of giants. I left at the age of 18 and enrolled in Washburn University, where I got my degree in accounting and finance. It was there that I met the most important person in my life, my wife Rhonda. After Washburn, I went and got my Harvard MBA and became a partner at the management consulting firm Bain & Company. It was while I was at Bain & Company that I'd been transforming companies that were fundamentally broken or at best satisfactorily underperforming. It was there that I actually developed the, the fundamental business tool of my career, the five steps to transform a business. The five steps have helped me, they've helped many others, and I hope today as we go through them they'll help you too. We're going to go through them for both business and maybe more importantly, for your life. At the beginning of the pandemic, I was on a Zoom call speaking to a group of CEOs. And they asked, what does it mean to lead in times of crisis? And I said, leadership is all about absorbing fear and exuding hope. Absorbing fear and exuding hope. And the five steps are going to help you do just that. The five steps are simple, but they're not easy. Let's go through them first for your organization. Step one, have a plan and track your progress. This is the most important step. I want you to pull out a piece of paper and write across the top, market, financial, product, and people. These are the four cornerstones of any business or any organization. Underneath each of these, write the three to five things that if you do them, you will transform the business. I call these value drivers because they extract all the value if you actually accomplish them. Now, I want you to keep your, your plan on one page at no less than 12 thought, font. It needs to be clear, concise, easy to understand, and easy to explain. Remember, you're going to give it to your customers, your coworkers, and your community. Step two, build a fortress balance sheet. This is all about having plenty of cash and a reasonable amount of debt. Don't skip this step. Most companies fail because they either run out of cash or they get in problems with their creditors. Step three, think money in, not money out. Frugality is important, but you can't save your way to prosperity. You need to think about how to generate revenue. Growth is the lifeblood of any business. It helps you to serve your employees, to serve your community, and actually to prosper as a company. Step four, build a team. Take out your one-page plan for your business and lay it in front of you. Ask yourself the question, who do I need to help me execute this plan. Make sure you have an A-team. Even in businesses that are very well run, you'll find that you need to replace 15 to 20 percent of the people or bring in some new people to help you execute the plan. Make sure you have the right people. And finally, step five, empower those that serve your customers. I call this let the inmates run the asylum. Basically, once you have a plan, you've built a fortress balance sheet, you've thought about how to generate revenue, bring money in, and you built your team, you need to give the tools and the compensation and the full authority to the employees who are actually serving your customers. You can't have a great company if, you don't, uh, ha if you're not a great place to work. When I was 32, I left the cushy job at Bain & Company and took over as president of Continental Airlines. Continental was what we called the 10th place airline out of 10 airlines. It was 10th out of 10 in on-time performance, baggage handling, and customer complaints. It had 10 presidents in 10 years, and it went bankrupt twice in 10 years. It was a very public disaster. Continental was really going to put the five-step process to the test. So we started with step one. We wrote a plan. We called it the go-forward plan. 
Fly to win was our market plan, fund the future our financial plan, make reliability a reality our product plan, and working together our people plan. We then did the next four steps. The turnaround was miraculous. We went from the 10th place airline to winning the JD Power Award as the best airline six years in a row. We went from being a terrible place to work to number 18 on the 100 best places to work in America. And we became highly profitable. Our stock price went from $6 a share to $120 a share, up 20 times. After Continental, I was able to apply the five steps at companies where I was a CEO, like Burger King and PwC Consulting, companies that we own at CCMP Capital, the private equity firm I run, and even to help some of the leaders of the companies where I sit on the board. Companies like the Home Depot, ADP, Baker Hughes, and organizations like the Baylor College of Medicine. It was a pretty heady time with accolades and awards. And yet, at the age of 45, I felt like I was satisfactorily underperforming in life. Jesus talks about in the Bible a church called Laodicea. And he says, Laodicea, you're neither hot nor cold, but you're lukewarm. As you can imagine, lukewarm is not great. But that was me. I was underperforming in life. I wasn't into the normal sins of sex, drugs, and rock and roll, but I was underperforming just the same. So it was time for me to actually ask myself the question, if I can write a five-step plan to turn around a company, maybe I can write the same plan to turn around me. I once heard that our fear should not be the fear of failure, but it should be the fear of focusing on things that don't really matter. So let's examine the five-step plan for each of us. Step one, build your own life plan. Stay focused with some simple life rules. Again, take out a piece of paper. Write faith, family, friends, fitness, finance. Those are the five Fs. Under each of those, actually write the three to five things you want to do to actually develop those eulogy virtues. Another great way to think about it is think about the five things you want people to say at your 80th birthday party. Begin with the end in mind. Those that, I wrote that plan, uh, that, that pl one-page plan for myself about 15 years ago. I actually carry it with me everywhere I go and I update it once a year. It's been fundamental in transforming my life. Step two, remember in business it was build a fortress balance sheet. In life it's similar, it's choose freedom. Basically what you want to do is build a budget that is anything but keeping up with the Joneses. Make sure you have plenty of cash, a reasonable amount of debt. You don't want anything to stand in the way of you executing your life plan. Step three, in business, remember, it's about growth. Think money in, not money out. In life, it's the opposite. Think money out, not money in. Generosity is the only cure for materialism. There are 15 major worldviews. Christianity, Judaism, Muslim, the Enlightenment movement with Immanuel Kant, atheism, and a whole bunch more. They all only agree on one thing. We should give money to those that are less fortunate than we are. I know it's been a great joy in my life, and I'm sure in your life, to be able to give my time, talent, and treasure to others. Step four, build your life team, align and prune. Take your one-page plan and lay it in front of you. Ask yourself the serious question, who builds me up? Who mentors me? Who challenges me? Who do I need in my life to make sure I stay on track? Build those people around you, spend more time with them. And if there are people that don't do that, just make sure you spend a little bit less time with them so that you can execute your plan. And finally, invest in family and friends. You cannot create those eulogy virtues if you don't invest. I have a great story here of a CEO, a former CEO of Home Depot by the name of Frank Blake. Frank would sit down and still does every Sunday afternoon and he writes thank you notes to all the people that influenced him that week. These thank you notes have gone everywhere. They're on bulletin boards, they're read and reread, they've changed lives. Frank, by the simple act of gratitude, created eulogy virtues. We all have people in our lives like Frank Blake. Let's actually spend more time trying to emulate them. So those are the five steps for business and for life. They transform my life. I hope they can, tra they've transformed a lot of other lives. I hope they can help you as well. It actually led to the process where I was asked to write a book about them, and that book is called Right Away and All at Once, Five Steps to Transform Your Business and Enrich Your Life. What began for me as a pathway to success 
became much more than that. It became a pathway to significance and to purpose. And it all started with a one-page plan, a deep internal desire, and five simple steps. I want my life to matter. I know you want your life to matter too.